Hello students, welcome back to the online video classes. In the previous class, we have completed our discussion on work energy power. Then we solved some numerical problems. And today we will start our new chapter that is chapter 19, Biodiversity and its Conservation. So first of all, we will discuss what biodiversity is. The word bio denotes to the term living. So the word bio means living and diversity is the variation. So today we will discuss about the variation of living forms. The entire flora and fauna. Flora is the word used for the plants and trees and fauna is the term which are used for various animals. So the entire flora and fauna and their variation is biodiversity. So biodiversity is the variations. Variations may be in the terms of size, in the terms of number that is density. So the variation in the size of living organism ranges from the microscopic plant bodies like algae that is the very smaller ones which we cannot see with the naked eyes. Only you can see the, these microscopic organisms with the help of special instruments like microscopes and ranges from these microscopic bodies to the giant banyan tree and the redwood tree. These redwood trees are very large. So there is variation in size from microscopic bodies to the large trees that is banyan tree and the redwood tree. We can't see these microscopic plant bodies. And on the other hand, the redwood tree which you can see from the large distances as they are very large in the sizes. So these are the variations in the terms of size. In the plants, like that in the animals, there is also variations in terms of size. That is, there are many small zooplanktons present in the water which are microscopic, which we can see only when they are present in the large number of groups. To the large number of mammoths and the whale sharks that are the very large fishes. So in animals there are also variation in the sizes. From microscopic bacteria to the large volume containing elephants. These are the variations in the living forms. A report regarding the, these kinds of variation is published by the United States of America in 1987 which basically defined the biodiversity. This report is known as the Technology Assessment Report in which they defined the biodiversity that is the diversity, variations, complexities, asymmetrical structure that is uneven structure variations found among the biological organism that is biological organisms is the living organisms including both flora that is plants and fauna that is animals. So they define biodiversity as diversity, variation, asymmetrical structure and complexity found among the biological organism that is in living organism. Biodiversity which is variation in living organism due to the continuous developmental and evolutionary changes. There are various changes in the environment. There is scorching hot deserts and there are also cold, cold deserts also. So these kinds of the hot and cold type of environments, there are some areas where there are rain, rainy environment is present. So these kinds of environment in which there are very much rain or an other habitat in which there is very hot desert like structure. So these kinds of environmental variation in the habitats of organism, there are also variations in the living organism. So the living organisms having variation due to the developmental and the evolutionary processes as well as due to the environmental changes. This environmental, developmental and evolutionary changes are occurring from a very long time that is from billions of years. So the diversity which we study today is the diversity which develops from a very long time. This biodiversity is very important as these variations balances the ecosystem. Some of the organisms can survive in the harsh habitats like in the very high temperatures, in the very salty areas that is halophils. These kinds of bacteria mainly can live in the harsh habitats and have a very better survival capability. So these kinds of variation leads them to maintain a ecological balance in the earth, on the earth. So ecosystem is a structure which contains both biotic that is living part and abiotic that is non-living part. So ecosystem is the interaction between living and non-living. So 
After the discussion of what biodiversity means, now we will discuss the levels of biodiversity which we defined for the purpose of study. So first of all, the first level of biodiversity is species diversity, that is variation in the species. It, so first of all, we will discuss what species is. Species is a group of organisms present in a particular area which can interbreed among themselves, that is they can produce the offspring that is young ones similar to itself. So members of species can reproduce freely in the natural conditions and the diversity of species is the variation in the species found in a particular area. So species is a group of organisms which can interbreed among themselves which can reproduce freely in the natural conditions and the diversity in these species in a particular area is the species diversity. So the maximum species diversity is present in the microorganisms. The density that is the number of microorganisms present in an area is microbial density and diversity is the variation between the microorganism. So both the microbial density and microbial diversity is maximum in the bacteria or you can say the microorganisms. So by an example is given about the microbial density and diversity is given in the column of species diversity that is in only 1 gram of soil there is more than 10 million bacteria and 50,000 fungi. So you can say that only in a 1 gram of soil there are so many bacteria and fungi and these bacteria and fungi are included in the microorganisms, the smaller organisms. So this was about the species diversity. Then the next level is the genetic diversity. The word genetics comes from the gene. Gene is the unit of inheritance which is transferred from the parents to their young ones. So this gene also contains the variation due to the mutation and due to the process of meiosis. So this diversity is found between different population of one species or between the members of a particular species. So every organism is different from the another one even siblings are also have siblings also contain some variations. So there are genetic variation in each and every individual and this in genetic variation leads to the different adaptations and natural capability of surviving in the diverse environment. So these variations are due to the adaptations and finally leads to the production of new members of the species. So this was about the genetic diversity. Now the next discussion is about the next level of biodiversity that is ecosystem diversity. In India there is a large amount of ecosystem diversity. Here grasslands are present, mountains, river valleys, everything is present in the Indian ecosystem diversity. I have told you that ecosystem is the interaction between biotic and abiotic components of the earth. Biotic will include the living ones and abiotic will include the non-living things. So the ecosystem diversity is the mutual interaction between living and non-living components. So there are different types of ecosystem diversity. First of all the grasslands in which mainly the grasses are present and the grass eating animals are present. Then the mountains in which hilly rocky mountains are present, deserts in which mainly sand is present and there is lack of water. There is very hot days and the very cold cold nights. So the fourth one is the moist, fourth one is the moist land where abundant amount of water is present. C. C is the area in which salty water is present along with the organisms living in the marine habitats. The next one is the river valley in which the river is present and the third one is tropical forest. In the tropical forest a large number of trees are present. So these were about the different types of ecosystem diversity, the habitats which are different in terms of the physical factors. Now the sec second term is global biodiversity. Global biodiversity is the overall biodiversity that is variation in living forms present in all over the world. So scientists are discovering the new species very frequently but according to the assessment of millennium ecosystem. There is about 50 to 300 million species of organisms found on planet earth and only scientists have discovered the 17 to 20 million species only. 
The variation of living organisms in the all over the world is global biodiversity which according to an assessment is 50 to 300 million but scientists have discovered only 17 to 20 million species. Why? As we are discovering the new species but before we are discovering them they are being extinct, extinct from the environment. So there are many species which have been extinct, disappeared from the earth till now we have not discovered that species. At equator biodiversity is maximum as there is suitable temperature, suitable environment for the species. So at equator there is maximum biodiversity. But as we are moving from equator to the poles, the biodiversity decreases and due to that decrement there is less survival capacity of the organisms living in the poles as compared to the organisms living near the equator. So near the equator like the middle and southeast America, the southeast Asia there is the maximum biodiversity as the tropical forests are present in the large amount. These tropical forests contain the maximum amount of plants and animals. So this region accounts for only 7% of total area of earth, the area which contains the tropical forest but has the two third of floral diversity that means they are containing a very small area of the earth but they have the large amount of plants and animals surviving there. So the biodiversity is very much that is two third of floral diversity, 30% of invertebrates and 90% of the pests are present. So this was about the global biodiversity. So according to the report of the Ministry of Environment and Forest of Government of India in 1999, they published some charts and the number of organisms present there. So these charts are given in your book on figure 19.1 and 19.2. So in the floral diversity of the world, the diversity related to the plants are given and the numbers are given in, in the columns. And in the second one there is diversity of animals, of animal kingdom there are animals like mollusks and amphibians, arthropoda, fishes, invertebrates, insects. So you, you don't have to remember the digits of included in the form of numbers but you have to, but you have to at least know that the, which one is having the maximum biodiversity and which one is having the minimum biodiversity. So, the next heading about is the biodiversity of India. First of all, we discuss the biodiversity of the all over the earth that is global biodiversity. Now we will discuss specifically the biodiversity of India. India due to its geographical location, it has a small area of, that is about 2.4 percent of the total earth but it contains 7 to 8 percent of the biodiversity. So, it, so you can say that India is among the 17 mega biodiversity countries of the world due to its location on the earth as in India there is suitable temperature present for the survival of the organism so it contains a large amount of organisms and due to that it is among the 17 mega biodiversity countries. So you can say that our country India is rich in the biodiversity. We are lacking the technologies for using these kinds of organisms. So we are still a developing country but if we will have that kind of technology for using our biodiversity more precisely then we can convert into a developed country. So according to the report of the Ministry of Environment and Forest, they are, there are around 45,000 plant species and around 1 lakh species of animals present in India. The exact numbers are given in your book and there are various plant species comprising fruit flowering plants that is angiosperms about 16,000, fungi are about 12,500, bryophytes are 2,500, algae are lesser than the bryophytes 2,300, lichens are 1,600 and ferns are 1,000. So similarly in animals there are about 400 mammals, 1,200 birds and about 450 reptiles. 40 amphibians. So you can say that the diversity of amphibians is very much less than the other ones. There are fishes approximately 3000 fishes and there are a large diversity of pests and insects present on the earth. These are about 60,000 near about. This was about the biodiversity present in the forest or in the natural habitats. Now we will discuss the agricultural diversity. In India there is a 
very huge amount of diversity present in the agriculture as there are about 167 species of food crops which are growing in india there are many varieties of a particular crop also as there are about 50000 varieties of rice and even of a mango there are about 1000 varieties of mango which are grown in the various parts of india so these were the biodiversity of india now we will discuss a term that is biodiversity hotspots hotspots are the area where maximum biodiversity is present as compared to the area occupied so area of hotspot will be very small as compared to the biodiversity present in it and there are also some conditions for having that tag of hotspots like you will have to have some organisms about 0.5 percent of the organism that is endemic species endemic species are the species which are found in a particular area and are not present in anywhere else so you have to protect that species in that particular area so that that species cannot become extinct so there are two prerequisite conditions for declaring an area a biodiversity hotspot first condition is about the endemic species i have told you the species which are found in a particular area and are not present anywhere else more than 0.5 percent of the total endemic species of the world should be present in that region in terms of number at least 1500 endemic species should be present at that place that means of the total biodiversity at least 0.5 percent of biodiversity should be endemic species the second one is 70 percent habitation of that area must be reductant that is human activities have menaced of the ex existence of that area it means that human activities should be avoided in that area so that area can be conserved for protecting that endemic species so human activities are prohibited in these hotspot area and that is the conservation of biodiversity in today we are having the 34 biodiversity hotspots in the all over the world it was earlier 25 and then some aquatic habitats are also included and then the number comes to 34 so there are total 34 biodiversity hotspots this concept of hotspots and their conservation is given by the scientist Norman Meyer in the year 1988. So, in the declared 34 biodiversity hotspots, there are approximately 42 endemic species of vertebrates are present, 55 species of fresh water fishes and about 50 percent of plant endemic species are found. There are some major biodiversity hotspots in the world, their name are given in your book on page number 233 that is Atlantic forest, East Malaysian islands, mountains of southwest China, islands of Madagascar, Central America, Colombia. Colombia have the very large tropical forest in which there are ma maximum amount of the biodiversity present. So then second one is the southwest China, the mountains of southwest China, islands of Madagascar, Choco, Central Child and Eastern Himalaya, Western Ghats, Sri Lanka and Indo-Burma. These are having the maximum biodiversity hotspots. So there are approximately three biodiversity hotspots which are present in India. These are the Eastern Himalaya, second one is Western Ghats and third one is Indo-Burma. Eastern Himalaya contains the states which are in the east side that is in the Assam, West Bengal, and Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim. So these will be included in the eastern Himalayas and will contain a maximum amount of biodiversity. Several numerical data are given related to the species and the endemic species present in the hotspots. The area which are included in the eastern Himalaya will be Himalayan Tahar. The organisms which are present in the eastern Himalayas are Himalayan Tahar, Golden Langur, Hullock, Gibbon, Pygmy Hog, Flying Squirrel, Snow Leopard and Gangetic Dolphins. These are the organisms which are present in the area of eastern Himalayan hotspots which are endemic as well as are present in the large amount as compared to the area occupied. The second one is a block is given with the heading that is do you know. The question is what is our national aquatic animal. So in the year 2009 the gangetic dolphins are declared as the India's national aquatic animal. This dolphin has the same significance in the river ecological system as that the tiger is having in that 
tree forest system these kinds of species which are very important for the ecosystem survival are known as the keystone species these are present in very less amount but they are having a very crucial role for the survival of other organisms like in the forest tiger is the keystone species and in the deserts the kangaroo rat is the keystone species like these kinds of species in the river there is the keystone species known as reef gangetic dolphins these dolphins plays a very important role for maintaining the ecological balance in the rivers and so that's why in india we have declared the gangetic dolphin as our national animal national aquatic animal the second one is about the western ghat the area in which the states like karnataka tamil nadu maharashtra goa kerala and gujarat are involved in these also there are several varieties or of species are present of mammals fishes which are also endemic the organisms mainly present in the western ghats include the malabar civet asian elephant malabar grey hornbill nilgiri tahar and the lion tailed macaque monkey so there are varieties of monkeys elephants hornbills are present in the western ghats then comes the indo burma biodiversity in which the states or the countries which are included is the china india myanmar vietnam thailand cambodia and malaysia in in the biodiversity of indo burma these countries are involved so this was about the hotspots present on the present in india the three hotspots are present among the 34 which are eastern himalaya western ghat and the indo burma so today we have discussed the term biodiversity the definition of it that is variation of living organisms then we studied the global biodiversity the diversity present in the all over the world then we discussed the biodiversity of the specific area that is our country india then we discussed the term hotspots the maximum number of diversity present which are in which some species are endemic that is present only in a particular area and are not present in any other area then we discussed the three bio, biodiversity hotspots present in india first of all the eastern himalaya in which the states like assam west bengal included so the second one is the western ghats in which the maharashtra kerala is included and the third one is indo burma in which along with india china myanmar indonesia malaysia these kinds of countries are also included so in the next class we will discuss the endemic species and then we will discuss the importance of biodiversity and their reasons of destruction of biodiversity thank you